we have a couple of individuals who have come up already with uh, and have been working on projects that have a lot of potential. So the first Im individual that I'd like to introduce is uh, Sydney. Over to you, Sydney. Code Watch is a project that's trying to use contact tracing uh, to figure out uh, and alert people uh, of when they've been exposed uh, or possibly been exposed to coronavirus. So the idea is that a bunch of people download uh, either our app or other similar contact tracing apps. We've got, uh, we're working on creating uh, standards so that they can all interface with each other. Um, and we estimate that if uh, in a area about 60% of people download these apps, uh, it'll be enough, thank you for pulling that up, uh, to make the difference between uh, the virus sort of accelerating its, its spread or uh, slowing to the point of being contained, not overwhelming the healthcare system. And that's actually, I said we estimate, that's actually an estimate from uh, Oxford, independent of us. Uh, and so the idea is we built this app. Uh, we are very focused on security, uh, which some of the other contact tracing apps aren't. Uh, we're doing it mostly through Bluetooth. And we would really love if anybody wants to join. Uh, we especially need people with legal expertise, um, uh, Android and iOS development expertise, and security and experience with Bluetooth uh, would be great. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is really exciting. Um, next up, we have uh, Mateo, and he's going to share his project on uh, 3D printing. Hey, thanks, Josh. Uh, I'm just going to try to share my screen here. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, an ongoing project that I got involved in a little over a year ago. Uh, so the company is called Make, and the idea uh, um, is a decentralized 3D printing network. So I was able to add uh, the founder, Nishat Rustagi, who's a close friend of mine, to this call. I'll let him speak a little bit more about what we're doing with Make and uh, the original purpose of the project and now how it's being applied to coronavirus response and, and accelerating the production of um, PPE and other, you know, supplies that are essential to the response here. Nishad, I don't know if you're on to talk a little bit more in detail. Yeah, hi. Um, so thanks for the introduction, Mateo. And so, yeah, we are building a manufacturing workflow platform. Uh, I've been doing this for two years and I've been involved in 3D printing for, I guess, five years now. Uh, so essentially what we have done is we have built a network of industrial 3D printers and CNC machines across America. And uh, we are digitizing manufacturing at the same time decentralizing it. Um, so we are pretty much like, uh, like we are like still in the early stages of development of the platform. Uh, you can check us out on makerstage.com. That's M-A-K-E-R-S-T-A-G-E.com. So um, at this stage, we're uniquely positioned to actually scale a lot of manufacturing for PPE, such as face shields, um, DIY masks, DIY snorkeling uh, fits for ventilators. Uh, so on a daily basis, I'm getting inquiries uh, to print upwards of uh, 5,000 parts per week uh, from various different clients or organizations, uh, including Lockheed Martin, which is now working with us. So. Uh, yeah, so I, I believe that we are very uniquely positioned in scaling manufacturing of uh, things really quickly. Uh, and we have a very elastic supply side, so we can, we can be printing, I guess, 25,000 pieces of uh, standard PPE parts per week. Um, so, and uh, at industrial uh, scale. So, yeah, and um, I think uh, we um, be happy to contribute to something like this and uh, uh, be of any help. And um, Matteo can also go over like the kind of people we are looking to join our team or help us with this project. Um, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, over to you. I'll, I'll just yeah, add on to what Nishad said. So, so originally I had posted about make thinking that maybe we could find people that wanted to print supplies, but I've actually been pretty excited and, and um, honored to have so much interest from the Stanford community to get involved. So, uh, you know, we're looking for people that have uh, the ability to help us on the sales or business development side or engineering, helping us build out this platform, make it more automated. Uh, you know, Nishat said that we could do up to 25,000 parts per week, but that's really taking into account that this is pretty much a 
to full-time employee effort plus myself. So uh, I, I think if we can build out this team to help with the COVID-19 response, that this is, this is a really strong way to help with, with the immediate um, you know, gap in terms of demand and supply for, for PPE. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, this is super exciting. Uh, all right, up next we have uh, Sam Gorman. He's, he's going to talk about his, his platform, Close, which is uh, specifically focused on statistics and news. Hi everyone, <laughs> good to talk to you. Let me share my screen real quick. Actually, before I do, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're up to. So like Josh mentioned, um, we're working on Close. What this is, is uh, what we're framing as a free tool for California residents to stay updated on key events, both in changes in statistics and local news in their area. Um, essentially, people are overwhelmed right now um, by the amount of news going their way. And there are also, a lot of stuff gets lost in the noise, right? For example, clear statistics like how many counts are in my area? How much did that increase? What do I need to know? What kind of actions do I need to take? So we've been developing a platform to help think about that problem. Uh, I'll show you a demo. In terms of timing of this, this should actually be released um, tomorrow. Um, so still very much hard at work trying to get this out. But let me show you what this looks like on a phone. So um, for example, it's a clear kind of, we start with a map of California based off of your current location. Um, and then you can just kind of quickly tap around and see for your area um, how crowded our cases and, and what's really going on in this area right now in a clear way. And then um, once you're here, this is, for example, your county, you can see, all right, well, this, this was about two weeks ago, but in this example, uh, 284 confirmed cases, it's up by 52. Okay, and then here's a set of local news outlets, reputable local news outlets that we verified on our end that we're then displaying to you for like, kind of a key local updates um, within your area. And then if you're curious, you can look around other areas as well. So this is available on mobile, this is also available on web. So we built out a web equivalent that looks like this um, for users to be able to access sort of platform agnostic. Um, and you can see that's very much in development here. That should be live by the end of tomorrow night. So how could you get involved? Uh, well, first, we'd love your thoughts. Um, feedback is always helpful. But on a higher level, uh, we're really looking for two types of people to be able to help out and, and really grow this to residents across California. One, people who consider themselves, um, I like as a creative, right? You're probably someone, maybe you illustrate, maybe you make art, maybe you design, maybe you write things, um, but you find power in creating new mediums. I think we'd be interested in talking to you. Um, really just thinking about how can we kind of employ some of that creative toolkit to spread this app in creative ways across various communities in California. The second type of person is someone who is excited by growth. So um, in an ideal sense, we can really share this free public health resource. We're just a group of students, right, who wanna make a difference. So um, we'd love to collaborate with anyone who wants to help this grow. It's, and I'd say, especially if you're excited by word of mouth growth, by more um, unconventional ways of, of really spreading tools. Um, and in an ideal sense, we can reach um, I'd say like millions of California residents in a, in a time where um, a lot of people are overwhelmed and people are really just looking for clarity um, and are looking for a kind of a clear daily statistic um, that they can trust. We pull all of this data from local departments of health and we don't make any pretense to interpret or create any of this data ourselves. We're really just trying to repackage it in an accessible, well-designed format and reach a lot of people across California. So uh, I'll put my email in the chat if you wanna reach out. Uh, Thanks for letting me talk, Josh. Awesome, thanks so much for sharing, Sam. This is super, super cool. All right, finally we have Andrew and he's going to be presenting his website um, for mutual aid. Thanks, Josh. Um, I think what you guys are doing is amazing, again, props. Um, I, um, I really liked, Sam, what you just presented because my website just conceptually is um, the same thing, but for mutual aid is how to make sense of noise because there's power in clarity, there's power in design and succinctness. Um, so I'm gonna tell you three things today. Uh, one is the higher level concept and what the gap 
uh, we're trying to fill. Two, it's about the project itself. So I'm going to show you um, what my project is. And three, what's next for us and what kind of people we're looking for or how we can help. Um, so a high level concept of this is that um, everything has changed, as you guys know. Fighting COVID is not just government's duty or responsibility. It's an all of society thing, right? A society has to do something. Now, um, the government is going to be the primary response vehicle for this, um, along with the private sector, with the free market, but there are gonna be gaps and that is where civil society comes in. On a higher level, we aim to help civil society channel um, resources to places that need it the most. So one is how to make sure healthcare systems stay afloat during this crisis. And two is how to really help our vulnerable communities. So where I'm from in Malaysia, there's a real risk of marginalized peoples dying and starving in this because a lot of people are wage workers, right? Wage laborers. They work day to day, they earn that day's wage, they buy food and eat and survive off of that. We have 200,000 refugees and 3 million migrant workers. When you have a lockdown, that's not gonna happen. And when you don't have savings, you're gonna starve. How do you make sure people don't starve and channel resources from civil society towards this? Now, the, um, the, the context is that civil society is resilient and proactive. You see this in a lot of uh, mutual aid initiatives and projects popping up. But again, there is this problem of noise. There's so much information out there. How do you make sense of it, right? Essentially, the gap is that search costs are really, really high. And the implication is that some well-meaning citizen or the average well-meaning citizen finds it hard um, to act because of this confusion and might be dissuaded from taking action. So our um, solution is a mutual aid platform that's user friendly. I'm going to share my screen. Do, do, do. There we go. It's called kitajagakita.com. Um, it is essentially a one stop platform for all mutual aid initiatives in Malaysia. Um, and we made it specifically so it's intuitive to use. So, one use case is that you're a well meaning citizen and you want to help. How do you do that? You click want to help. If you need help, you click need help. So we've listed and compiled all the initiatives and, and making it easy um, to, for the user to search based on objective. Do I want to help vulnerable communities? Do I want to help frontliners in the medical system? Do I need help? So let's say if you want to help vulnerable communities, you click this. Do I want to donate money, food, volunteer? Do I want to help migrants and refugees, women and children, da 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 so in a very intuitive and user-friendly way, focusing on design, we make it easy uh, for citizens to channel their help to civil society initiatives to help the most vulnerable, to help medical frontliners, and also to ask for help. So we think this is really powerful. Um, and um, it is, um, we, 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 when we, we, we launched this two weeks ago, um, and we have a couple of successes. So one, in terms of users and visitors, we've had 35,000 visitors in the last two weeks. Um, we have had substantial media traction. We are also the main hashtag for all civil society initiatives in Malaysia. So we're very proud of that. There is um, leverage in that. So corporates have come to us to say, hey, uh, what's up? Um, we want to help in this. Do you have specific initiatives that you can direct us towards um, and how we can best help? Um, and two, um, we're very replicable. This is a very, I would say, a, a low tech um, solution to the problem. It's not AI, it's not this. It's really having the right design to help channel um, information and resources. Um, so we're, the proudest accomplishment of kitajagakita.com um, is that our very own classmate here, Tilo Braun, has launched his German platform based on our platform and design. Um, and it's launching today, and I'm wondering if he wants to speak about that later, but we're so happy that he's done that. It, it's, um, to us, it's, it, it's a confirmation that our model is replicable across communities and countries. Um, I think another classmate of ours, Joy, is thinking of launching a similar platform in New York, um, and that's, that's great. Um, we are also using our leverage to educate people. So within communities who need help, who are the most vulnerable. Um, we publish blog posts, for example, to say, 
actually, um, if you look at all of them, refugees, stateless, migrant workers are probably the most important because they don't benefit from the government's safety net. So we're trying to educate civil society to help them make better choices. Um, what's next for us is really um, that we want to see our, um, we, we think we've hit on something um, and, and it's the right design. Um, and we'd like this to be replicated across communities and countries. So if any of this is at all resonant with you, um, if this strikes a chord, please talk to us. Um, talk to me, talk to Tilo, who's just launched his in the last like week or so. So Tilo's amazing. I'm so impressed with his like organizational skills. Um, two, um, we we can what we can offer you is is the ideation. We can talk you through the design choices that we've made. Um, we, for example, we decided against sharing information um, because that, that's not our comparative advantage, right? One of the choices was like, should we also have another part that says this is um, the right way to deal, deal with COVID? This is the right way to self-isolate. Um, we decided to scope down and that was the right choice, for example. Um, so we're happy to do that. We're also happy to offer you introductory plug and play templates um, so you can hit the ground running, right? The real work in this is not so much the website development, it's more how do you categorize and, and, and find the various, various initiatives and make it in a way that's relevant and intuitive to civil society. So uh, we think we've hit on something. We're very happy that this has been replicated across countries. Um, and let us know if this strikes a chord um, and together we'll help people reclaim their agency and power in this crisis by helping other people. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew. This is super, super exciting. And I do encourage you, uh, if this is like Andrew said, if it's resonant, please reach out to them. You know, this is a super impactful project. I feel like it should be sort of a front page of the internet for respective communities. So yeah, awesome.